Hello, my name is Nate Lang. I am representing Montana State University, and today I am presenting the paper Predicting Anti-Cancer Peptides Using Deep Neural Networks by myself and Indika Kahanda. As I'm sure we all know, cancer is among the leading causes of death worldwide. Anti-cancer peptides may be a promising alternative to chemotherapy. They can target cancer cells more selectively than traditional chemotherapy can. Unfortunately, wet lab experiments are quite costly. As a result, there's been an interest in the computing world in developing systems that can predict anti-cancer peptides. Uh, most of these systems use the overall chemical properties of the peptide as input features. Our idea was to use the actual sequence of amino acids to make the predictions using an RNN. Previous models to predict anti-cancer peptides include MLACP, which used the physicochemical properties of the entire peptide as input features to random forests and support vector machines. ACPDL uses recurrent neural networks to iterate over amino acids, much like our own proposed method. At present, it appears to be the first and only model to use this technique. Our proposed method is a hybrid convolutional neural network recurrent neural network model. It uses trainable embedding layers to encode amino acids as vectors. The RNN iterates over the entire amino acid sequence, while the convolutional neural network analyzes spatially close amino acids. Therefore, we believe that these two structures complement each other. Ultimately, this is a binary classification problem, so the output of the model is a 0 or a 1, depending on whether or not the neural network believes the input sequence represents an anti-cancer peptide. For this project, we used five ACP datasets, three from MLACP and two from ACPDL. Unfortunately, all of these datasets are rather small, with the largest one being LEE from MLACP with 844 data points. To allow our model to be more accurate, we implemented transfer learning, a process wherein the neural network is initially trained on a, a larger and similar data set. In this case, we chose the antifungal peptides as our transfer set. We chose this because antimicrobial peptides often have anti-cancer properties as well. To evaluate our model, we compared it to both MLACP and ACPDL. When comparing with MLACP, we first performed tenfold cross-validation on the Tayagi dataset. This process was used for optimization for both the MLACP models and our own model. Then, we trained on the Tayagi dataset and tested with both the HC and LEE datasets. With ACPDL, we performed fivefold cross-validation on both ACP240 and ACP740 to mimic their process as closely as possible. We were also able to perform fivefold cross-validation on Tyagi, which is something that they did not do in their original paper, but we were able to do because we had access to their code. Now, neural networks tend to be very sensitive to the random seed. To properly gauge the statistical significance of our results, we did 30 runs of every one of our tests, as well as those of ACPDL, because again, we had access to their code. When it came time to perform similar tests with MLACP, however, we did not have access to their code. Thus, we were only able to perform a simple t-test when comparing with MLACP, and a paired t-test when comparing with ACPDL. When comparing our model with MLACP, we found that when testing with the HC dataset, our model had statistically significantly superior results in sensitivity, with our model having 0 0.941 and theirs having 0 0.889. With regards to the Matthews correlation coefficient, they had uh, superior results 
with a score of 0.885 and ours having a 0.869, but this was not deemed statistically significant. With regards to the LEE dataset, their models performed significantly better than ours. We believe that this may be partially due to the fact that the distribution of sequence lengths within the HC dataset is similar to that within the Tayagi dataset, the training set. Meanwhile, the distribution of sequence lengths within the LEE dataset is very different. We believe that with our model being a sequence-based one, it may be more sensitive to these kinds of discrepancies than other models. When comparing our model with ACPDL, we found that we had inferior results when testing with the smaller ACP240 dataset. In contrast, when testing with the ACP740 dataset, we had statistically significantly better results across the board. In summary, anti-cancer peptides are a promising alternative to chemotherapy. In this project, we developed a novel deep learning model for predicting ACPs using their amino acid sequences. We found that our model significantly outperforms the previous RNN model, ACPDL, when using large data sets. We hope that future work might improve these RNN-based models. In particular, we hope that larger data sets may result in better performance in the future. Finally, the paper describing this project has been accepted by the 14th International Conference on Practical Applications of Computational Biology and Bioinformatics, which will be held in L'Aquila, Italy in October of this year. Thank you.